Oppenheimer isn't really the movie that you expect it to be. I know there's the memes out there. There's the whole Barbenheimer ph phenomenon that's going on and all of that. But really at the heart of it, it is a frighteningly beautiful experience at the movies from Christopher Nolan. I saw it in IMAX. I just got out of it. So here's my review of Oppenheimer. And you have to ask yourself the question, is this movie good? Is it great? Is it perfect? Let's dig in. So Oppenheimer tells the story of J. Robert Oppenheimer, the leader of the Manhattan Project here in the United States, and basically the father of the atomic bomb, the nuclear bomb, the H-bomb, whatever you want to call it. He is the person that was driving the entire prop, uh, operation, the entire project. It explores the inner workings of humanity, of us, as us creating this weapon that is this super horrifying thing. And Christopher Nolan taps into that in what might be his best film. This might be his magnum opus. And it's just expertly led by Killian Murphy as J. Robert Oppenheimer. There's three prongs to this movie. There's three pillars, if you would, if you would call it that. There's the the science, which is led by Oppenheimer, played by Killian Murphy. There's the politics, which is play which is Robert Downey Jr.'s character Strauss. And then there's the family, which is Kitty Oppenheimer, played by Emily Blunt. So each of those three pillars you get a lot of. You get his family and the sort of human aspect of it. You get the politics of it, of the war, everything that went on before and after. And then, of course, you have the science behind it with Oppenheimer and all the other characters in it. But the three pillars of this movie, they put in performances that are absolutely stunning. Robert Downey Jr. is going to get a bunch of press for this movie because his performance is absolutely excellent. But do not let that take away from Killian Murphy's performance here because he leads the film. There is no one else that I can imagine that would take this, that could do this role. Robert Downey Jr.'s character, there's a couple of actors that I was sitting there going, yeah, maybe Jeremy Irons could do this. Or oh, maybe like Gary Oldman could have done this, which is funny because Gary Oldman's in the movie. But Killian Murphy's performance you cannot emulate it. There's no one else that could fill this role. Emily Blunt's performance as Kitty Oppenheimer is a little bit more subdued, a little bit more sort of below the surface, but there's a couple of scenes where she really stands out and she steals from the rest of the cast. Outside of those three, the supporting cast, they all do their best to accentuate the performances in this film from the main three. You have uh, Florence Pugh as... Oppenheimer's lover before Kitty which sort of subverts that whole thing when you're in this historical drama where the guy's a womanizer you might think oh well they're gonna have an affair with someone else but she's the one that has the affair tab on her it's crazy Josh Hartnett is absolutely fantastic he is no longer that teen heartthrob that you remember from the 90s he's a full-fledged actor here he is so god damn good in this movie it's amazing that he hasn't had a role like this to sink his teeth into with a performance like this because he just turns in this excellent, excellent work here. Oh my gosh, it's just, oh. Alden Ehrenreich is, is Strauss's sort of assistant when he's going through his confirmation hearing for the cabinet is excellent. He just steals a scene from Robert Downey Jr., which is impossible to do, folks. Like, Robert Downey Jr. is one of the best actors we've ever had. Alden Ehrenreich steals a scene from him near the end of the movie, there's other performances in this movie. Matt Damon is great. He acts as sort of a babysitter for the Oppenheimer, for Oppenheimer, for the Manhattan Project. There's so many great performances throughout here. Like, there's too many to list. They're all so good, and they all just add to the film and add to the other performances. And every scene is just this battle, this tennis match, this everything going on back and forth. It's just... Everyone in this movie is so good, and it helps from the script that Christopher Nolan turns in. He has had some amazing scripts over the years, but this one is easily his best. The way that the story is structured here, it goes between times and between scenes, sort of very loosey-goosey, go with the flow here, and it, it doesn't give you, it doesn't sort of baby feed it to you, it just is like, you know, there's no, like, dates, there's no years at the bottom trying to go, oh, well, this is actually 1945, oh, this is 1929, oh, this is in 1949. Well, it doesn't do that. It just, you know, you, you learn it, you go through it, you figure it out as you watch it, and it just aids the film so much, because otherwise it would just read like a history textbook. And th that's what this movie does so well. 
is that it takes material that is dense and just historical and it gives it an edge, it gives it the human element to it, and it makes it so that it's not just like reading a history textbook or not just reading a biography. It's something more than that. And I know a lot of the people out there are going to be, oh, well, what about the explosion? What about the atomic bomb? That is the focus of what people want out of this movie, but it shouldn't be, and it's not what the movie focuses on. The atomic bomb test that, you know, the whole thing that's guiding through it, oh, Christopher Nolan's going to blow up, you know, blow up a nuclear bomb and all of that. That happens like in the middle of the movie. That That's like the, the journey up to the middle, and then you get the rest of it after that, which is court cases and court hearings and interviews and all this stuff that would be just so mind-numbingly boring to watch that Christopher Nolan takes and makes into riveting film just the tension of all of these scenes back to back to back and it ends on such a poignant and frightening note walking out of the theater i haven't felt this way about a movie in a long time coming out of the theater where it's made me in awe of filmmaking in awe of christopher nolan in awe of the just the cinematography the effects the the performances the sound design and it was this feeling of elation where it's oh my god this is a spectacle but then this commentary on who we are as human beings and what this new frightening age that the modern day Prometheus that is J. Robert Oppenheimer created for people with the invention and the use of the atomic bomb and it's been a long time since a movie has made me feel this way and I think it's going to be a long time since a movie makes me feel this way again because you just walk out of this movie feeling like a human but you feel the emotions and the Killian Murphy does such a great job of getting you to in the head of Oppenheimer and how he changes throughout and the the sort of investigations that go on after in the third act of the film follow that character arc where he is this just you know happy-go-lucky sort of giddy about it scientist and as they go through and they get up to the point of the test you have this feeling of tension in the air and oh my god what are we doing and that his character changes like that and it's so perfect in the film and the way that they do it and just the whole thing I cannot think of a bad thing about this movie. I know people are going to be disappointed that the conclusion, the epic, this isn't a spoiler, but the conclusion of the film, it's a historical movie anyway, that the conclusion of the film is not them dropping the atomic bomb. The conclusion of the film is much more muted and much more a commentary on politics and humanity as a whole than it is just this explosive spectacle. It's a perfect movie. It is a spectacle. It is Christopher Nolan's magnum opus. And if you see it, you need to see it in IMAX. You need to see it. And I say this a lot about films. You need to see it with the biggest screen, the biggest speakers, whatever, everything. You truly will take away from this film if you do not go see it in one of the preferred formats of Christopher Nolan in either 35 millimeter original film or 70 millimeter IMAX because you are doing yourself a disservice as a moviegoer to not see it in the best possible way. And this movie hopefully will make you think and make you sort of ruminate on who we are and what we've done in our history and the new era of war that we are in, that we have been in since that nuclear test, since they dropped the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And it's just a perfect film. It is. And I'm going to give it a hundred out of a hundred. That might sound blasphemous, Oppenheimer is among the best films ever made and through all of its mechanisms, all of its elements, it is a movie that will make you a better human being watching it and it'll make you a better moviegoer watching it. So make sure to check out Oppenheimer in theaters this weekend, this Friday. You can go see it with Barbie. You can go see it without Barbie. For the people out there that are wondering, oh, well, 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 should I see it? You know, if you're doing Barbenheimer, the double feature, watch Barbie first. Because it'll ruin Barbie for you if you go see this movie first thinking, I'll get the depressing movie out of the way and then we can go get happy. Because the way Oppenheimer makes you leave the theater, it's not a depressing movie, 
but you will be thinking about it the entire time you're watching something else or the entire time you're going home. So don't see something after it. Don't see Barbie after it. See it first. So if you like more movie reviews like this, make sure to check out my playlist of them all. I have them right here. You can see all the movies I love. Oppenheimer is going to go to the top of the list, though.